Good evening, everyone. Oh, of sparkly stuff. Yeah. I don't know what's going on. You can be brighter? Right. There we go. <sighs> Lights not set up. Ah, good evening, Kit. I'm hoping that that camera is looking a bit washed out. I need to do another setup of the cameras and stuff. Uh, it should be all right for all right. You can see all my muck on my fingers, so must be of decent quality. Right, things, few things for tonight. Uh, where do we start? We've still got the vital assets to be going on with with bits and pieces. We've got the shield upgrade. Which I was going to speak to Kay about. Um, do you know when you say to paint it, have people been putting it through an airbrush to paint the silver on? Or has it just been um, with a brush? I'll let you answer that one in a minute. <laughs> uh, so I've got that one to do. I have um, a whole lot of stuff behind me to open and show people. I whacked, just whacked a bit on with a brush. I'm going to try an airbrush, mate. Good evening, Foxy. And I've got my sneak tag back. Let me get something with a bit of colour on, just to check that. Does that look washed out, or does it look fine? Yeah, it looks okay for now. It's just the black seems a bit contrasted. Let's have a, a quick play before we get loads of people here. The filters. Yeah, well, I've got a way to actually get... Yay, welcome, Mark. Is there any way to get... One second. Sorry about this. I should have been setting up, but we've had, again, one of those days where the door's never been knocked on so much for deliveries. Right, so that's good colour. Try that. Yeah, I'll go with that for now. I want to try and get a better, bigger light for above here, so it's just going to fill this area with the brightest, lightest light going, and that should fix the camera totally. So, there we go. We can see it. It's fine. Um, what have I done with that? Have I managed to... Um, so, a couple of things. We've got that to do. We've got some box openings to do. Because I know Foxy wants to see what's, uh, what the Primaris Trooper's like. Because he's definitely down there to be looked at. Um, so he's there to I'm going to open him in a minute I'll probably do that first mate since you're here and it was mainly for you anyway um, I want to try and get a bit of Iron Verso done um, I've still got them to do today or when I actually do them uh, I've also got a bit of a, a sneak peek because this turned up today So that's the core rule set. I've got all the figures and the scenery. Hi, Simon. So I've got all of the Elder Scrolls stuff to have a, a look at today as well. Uh, and I got asked a couple of questions. And Simon was one of the people asking about um, airbrushes. So 
it's a right. I'm, I've just been watching. Um, <laughs> Snowy, who should be along any second now. Um, we've just been discussing what it is. It's a. Um, it's a skirmish game. But it's all... Yes, you look scary as hell, Simon. I've just seen the picture come up. Um, it's a skirmish game, but it's also uh, a dungeon delve. It's also cooperative. There's a fair few... Yeah. <laughs> Welcome, Snowy. Yeah, there's a fair few ways to play it. So um, it looks interesting. Um, I just did the usual thing. I was buying it because I do like Elder Scrolls. Sorry, my knees are really itchy from where I sunburnt them. Hi, Del. <laughs> the thing is, Simon, with that picture, um, it actually blocks out your face, so it is actually pretty good. Is it a bad time to ask for when mine's coming? Hey, Steve. So, I know the people who wanted to have a look. Um... This <laughs> this fella turned up. Um, there's a bit of a story behind it as well. Uh, when I managed to see this, uh, it was direct order only. And it was literally the week that I'd... Um, I just paid loads of bills. The business had paid loads of bills. So I physically couldn't afford one. And... One of my <laughs> one of my friends, TBP, uh, was sat in Games Workshop, rang me, asked me if I wanted one. I, said, I just said, I'm going to have to pass on it. I'd really love one, um, and I'd really love to paint it up as a Red Scorpion. And he actually bought me one in, um, which was I was absolutely blown away by. And it turned up... Um, Joe went over and picked it up yesterday. So, Bandai action figure. It's got. A, I'm gonna take that off. I don't mean Space Wolf. Space Scorpion. I keep that down there. So anyway, here we go. Let's have, let's have an opening up. You might get some close up, and you might get some horrible pictures. It is set up for. Um, Oh, is that sellotape? No. There's some sort of sellotape. Is it a sleeve? Might be a sleeve. <laughs> and... So... God, I can't get it out. Red Scorpion, old frick. It's what the Space Wolves should have been. The better chapter. Right, so I'm guessing that this is... Hi, Rasta. Um, there is a new set of these coming out. There was someone posted some pictures up about them. But these are currently... I don't know why I'm opening it. Because they're currently selling... Um, God, I can't even get in. I really just want to rip it open, but when these fellas are selling for like 300 quid a pop, I really don't want to just rip it open. Nope. Um. Ah, got it. There we go. <sighs> you mean spa uh, space puppies? Oh. Yeah, it's very. I know how you know because this is how the blooming Gundams come. <sighs> so it has a sleeve over the box. And. You're asking why it's so big, Jack? Because it is so big. That is... 
they were 70 or 80 pound retail. Oh, please. Coffee. I'll have a coffee, please. Um, and they did, I think it was 1500 mate. And they're on eBay and they're, they're in silly price. When the first came out and I was, I found out that they were coming, they were going for silly prices. Um, I was just so lucky that TBP got us this one. There is a cheaper variant coming, um, but they were, uh, yeah, they look, it, it was announced in the, was it 9,000? Yeah. When they first went on eBay, they were like 300 quid a pop. Yeah, they're all already painted. It is meant to be a... It's all different hands and all different... Right, let's get the backpack out. Wow, there's so much tape. You can tell this isn't GW because it would have all just splurged open by now. <laughs> Hello, Martin Beast, Martin E person. So that's the backpack, has fully moving vents. Oh, hands. Hands. More hands. I'm not sure I'd feel comfortable about painting this one myself. <laughs> uh, right, so that's the bolter. Huh? There is a knife. Oh, I feel like action man. I feel like it's an action man. <laughs> yeah, Jack. It's clicky, pausable. There we go. Stood up. Punching someone in the face. His head moves up, down, left, right. Oh, the shoulder pads. They're on, like... Oh. Wow. Um... Haha. <laughs> Didn't break the hand taking the gun. Still didn't break it. Yeah, even the feet are bending. The f <laughs> wow. Oh. No! <laughs> um. <laughs> Shut off. Oh no, it just pops off. Mm-hmm. 
It didn't break. <laughs> I'm not going to lose any bits off it. So, let's have the backpack on. Um... have to admit that is bloody nice so obviously you've got the different hands to do different things with which is two fists two like that <laughs> um, obviously one's a knife one's a gun Wrists are articulated on a ball joint. Elbows articulated. The elbow pad is the bit that came off. It does come off. Um, and that articulation. Open hands, yes. Well, it, it's also a gesture. It's like a... They use it for signing as well when they're being quiet and all that sort of stuff gesturing hand <laughs> um, so shoulders are very articulate so when the shoulder goes up and it hits there the shoulder pad actually disengages and comes out to like cover at that sort of angle so if you're wanting to pause it as if it's coming in sort of thing uh, waist and legs the usual articulation and as Kay said the feet have one two three or four positions and the toes bend so you can put the toe down as if it was walking Yeah, I. That is really nice. Um, it's it is hella cool, yeah. I know they showed a Necron and another Space Marine, but they weren't Bandai, and I honestly don't think they're gonna get anywhere close to this. Because even on that, the finger goes round. The finger goes round the... I'm actually just going to pull the hand off. And he's going to have that hand on while, I'm, while he's not got the gun. <coughs> he would look very nice in grey. Grey with yellow trim. That's me set for the night. I know I'm uh, right. I will put him away. So yeah, I'm quite chuffed with that. I'll send um, TBP a message and, and give him another thank you later. I'll never hear the end of it. I'll be honest with you. I've not bought any things like Gundams or figures or anything like that um, since I was a wee nipper so things could have come on and I'm just not used to it with being so old if toys are this now I wish I was a kid in this a day and age not back then <laughs> so, an open hand So, itchy neck. 
No, not Space Wolf Grey. Mechanica Standard Grey. Something along the lines of... I think, like, that colour. With that shoulder pad. Would look amazing. But yes, uh, they've, they announced another one made by another company, not by Bandai, and it didn't look articulated or as articulated or anything like that. So, what I should have done is spread this silver before going on much. Um, as I said, a couple of people have been asking about airbrushes, so... Thank you for the follow. Um, as people have seen, I use the Sotar 2020. Um, it's people. Uh, we got this off the back of a conversation I went on to the um, Legion forum last night, and someone was asking about it, and I just picked up off the back of it. Um, <laughs> Airbrushes do have a following. I, I love my Badger airbrushes. Uh, Rasta loves his Iowater airbrushes. They're they're basically the same. All the yep. Yeah. Jack's got the um, Neo. If people ask me, um, I tend to recommend the the Neo because it's a good entry level price. Either the Neo or if you can get a cheap sort out one of the two. That is the Eclipse so that's the one that Rasta's just got um, he just moved up into the uh, the next one up so well this might help you out Mark um, for if you're seriously wanting to do it and you do a lot of models within a year without using the airbrush to its full potential or even probably a tenth of its potential You'll have saved the money in primer alone. So, revolution, yeah. Um, there's there's loads out there. Uh, I've got one that I'm scared to use. Um, I've got the Infinity CR Plus. Um, this is, uh, as I was told when I got it, uh, uh, the Rolls Royce of airbrushes, so I very rarely use it. I've, I am a little bit scared of it, to be honest. I don't want to break it. Um, these I've took the sort out. I've got uh, all the sort outs. So I've got three different setups, three different needle sizes, and we can talk about that one in a second as well. Um, but as I'm sure Rasta will say as well, the I want a Neo, which is very much like that for a starter brush you can get them um round about i've seen them as low as 60 quid for the um the neo i don't know what jack paid uh, jack's just bought one so you would have a better idea um i I bought mine and I started using it on last week. 75 quid. But yeah, they're a great starter brush. Um, the Sortars are a little bit more. Yeah, I knew Jack got his reasonably cheap. So, 60 quid for one of them. You can get the, the cheap compressors off eBay. I'm just going to have a quick look to see if they still do them. AS186. So yeah, um, yeah. I don't know what that one. I don't know what the eclipse was because again, it was one I got in a bulk lot. So the eclipse came with a, 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 someone's collection. So I just kept that. It is a lot to uh, invest, but as I'll show you now. So if you go for yeah, car body workshop or from a car body workshop place. So if you got the Neo for sixty quid. You can get one of the AS186 airbrushes. They're a 
Chinese airbrush uh, compressor. They come with airbrushes, but most of them just you fling them away. They come with an air hose, which again saves you about 10 15 quid. Some get a little bit of paint and stuff like that. It's all just cheap bits, but around about 80 to 100 pounds for a compressor, you end up getting um, something that can do all of your priming with one bottle. So this is Steinal Res, Steinal Res uh, primer, and it's not the only one out there, it's just the one I use. Um, this is a 16 ounce bottle, 473 mil. It is Badger's own make. I swear by it. Others swear by the Vallejo. Um, I've got all of the Vallejo surface primers up there. But again, I just use this. Now, this was £25. So that's the same price as two bottle, uh, two rattle cans. Um, squirt for squirt, you get round about 60 rattle cans worth of priming out of that bottle. So 60 cans at six at ten pound a can if you're getting them cheap is 600 quid. You've spent 150 pound on a compressor and airbrush setup. 25 pound on that, you're still 425 pound better off in the long run. And I know it's going to take probably four or five years for that saving to come along, but in those four or five years, you go from um basically priming models to doing stuff like that now i showed people last week that was just a quick it was just one of our stencils and four different colors from the vallejo air range and it took nothing to do it you just play around with it you it, it just it the more you play and the more you do daft bits and pieces, the more you find uses for it, the more you can do different bits. I would show you the... You've, you've saw the tank. Uh, <laughs> yeah. The, uh, what logo? Well, I don't know. I, what, there's nothing there. Look, it's a blank piece of wood. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was just showing off the stencils. The um, We called it the Fiery Phoenix from... Oh, that, I forgot the name of the cartoon now. But yeah, I just did a quick demo of how to quickly blend and how to get a, a colour. Uh, when you get the airbrush, and I'm sure sure Mark will, it's not Red Battle of the Planets, that's the one. Um, when you get the airbrush and you start using it, you'll start picking up little bits and pieces for it. Like I have the quick release kits, because I, I bounce between a few. Um, I also have an inline regulator. So I can turn it down here. You'll see people all the time going, oh, what PSI do you use? What PSI do you run? Um, people might, uh, people like Rice, that might know what PSI they run. I don't. I just, I tend to know by the feel, by the first tester, whether I need to up it a bit or down it a bit. Um, and You get used to it. It's somewhat like, Using a paintbrush, you get used to it over time. And what silver should we use, K? What silver? Should we use the chrome? I'll give the chrome a go. Um. Yeah, I'll give the chrome a go on that so that can dry while I quickly show you some other bits and pieces of how to start off. Um, the huge misconception of it taking uh, five minutes to use it, and yeah, this is what I was about to go to, and um, two hours to clean it. It's rollocks. <laughs> um... I'm just, we're just trying something that um, we talked about last night. Trying to get the silver into all of the gaps on the card. If this works, guess what the main prize in the 
give away. Yeah, I'll show you because I've got to clean this in between use. Guess what the main prize of the giveaway is going to be? When it all works lovely like Kay said it would. Oop. And Lee puts it on a little bit too thick. So I'll leave that there to dry. <laughs> It'll be a blue one. Um, you don't win the prize. So, what I have next to my desk, and Rasta has some exactly. Most people have it. Um, mine's got sneak cans in at the moment. So, can you see that? They're my empty sneak cans from drinking. Um, I also have a tomato ketchup dispenser bottle from um <laughs> ah well i'm gonna let it dry i'll show you why in a minute um so I'm, it might go horribly wrong um this is just a uh tomato ketchup bottle from the uh the Greasy Spoon Cafes and that use them. And I've just filled it with water. I haven't cut the top off. I've just let it quite um, quite thin. Um, yeah. With it, you can just squirt into the cup. Gets the water out. I do have a specific brush. Clean all in there. I can't see what I'm doing, so I am just guessing. Um, another squirt. And then... Once once you check in that there's nothing left in there, just a little bit of water, let it blast through. And get water all over the camera. So... <laughs> um, I do that in between colour changes. When I've finished on a night... Um, I've then got proper spray through cleaner so I spray that through put quarter of a cup in spray that through it cleans a lot of what's inside as well and then I put badger cleaner into it you can do exactly the same with any of the cleaners and any of the washes it doesn't have to be badger it can be any of them uh, Luke at Luke's APS does videos on how to make you your own i've got airbrush thinner and airbrush cleaner on the shelf that uh, luke showed me how to make years ago and it's just as good it's just i've got these here from people's collections uh and what i do is on a night when i've finished i just obviously i've got a rack over there with them all in i just leave a little bit of that in the the cup and then i've got some caps to go over them um and if you keep it damp inside, it tends to, to keep it going. If you do get... Um, let's see if it shows it. So, something that you are going to learn is how to take it apart and put it back together. They're all basically fundamentally the same. They've got a pin, they've got a screw that holds the pin, they've got a plunger for the air and pull back for the paint a cup and then the the tip seat and everything in there so undoing that allows you to pull the needle out and the tip of that needle is the thing that you've got to keep safe unmolested untouched unbent there we go it's still okay but even from just that silver i can feel that there's paint on there so I use again water but when I really need to clean it I've got um, spray craft air cleaner this is um, alcohol based so it is quite smelly but you can just do that pull it backwards once twice and you can see how much paint that took off um, that just gives it a lot more of a clean than the water does. You can then, if you want to give it a really good clean, you put that through. If 
for any reason you're getting blocks and sticks and stuff like that then you can strip all the parts off um, and again it doesn't take much to strip them the uh, quickly show you and as raster will tell you they're not much different to each other so pin comes out it is kept safe I'll put the plunger there as well oh hell so my plunger's got dirt in it so mine could probably do with a good deep clean and a proper strip down um, I'm using mine every day three or four times a day at least priming um, zenithal highlighting everything like that uh, and tech I should be cleaning it a lot more but time constraints and stuff like that and getting showered out now so the body comes apart I think most of them the back body comes off that then comes out and that's the the plunger part uh, don't need to do that for this uh, again take that out leave that assembly in one pit piece that's the fiddliest bit in the whole thing to get the right way around and get back in uh, if you can master that just look how it goes look on the pictures take a couple of pictures of it before you take it apart yeah, and you're laughing right because I wasn't expecting to do this it is I have a complete rebuild set ready for this one because this has been my workhorse and it is quite, uh, it's probably three year old now and it's been hammered. So the head will come out as a whole and it leaves the end like that. So you've got very similar setups on all of them. So you've now got um, the paint path there. So you can undo the nozzle and again you've got air and paint mixing chamber there and there is the tiniest of tiny bits and this is the bit <laughs> yeah i do this probably once a month mate um and then there's that bit there so in a deep clean i would put all of this into the ultrasonic cleaner just as it is there now um methylated spirits um two or three 20 minute blasts uh, I've then got a couple of bits and pieces that I use if it still hasn't cleaned I've just got some airbrush pipe cleaners uh, da, da, da. so I can take that and I can put it through that tube and it's cleaning uh, if I want to give it a bit of a better clean I can also put some of the um, the spray th cleaner onto it. Yeah, that's it's not a proper clean. It's just showing it. Then the tip goes back on. That goes back on top of there. Wash is still in place. That needs to be seated. Oh, I'll just double check that actually. Cause. Just clean that. The surface there. Yeah. And make sure that surface is clean there. Where they made up. Um, and that's done. trigger and I shake a lot so if I can do this I'm sure you use a lot can trigger and then very carefully because you don't want to if you feel resistance don't just push it just make sure that goes in just loosely tighten it up and then it triggers backwards and forwards something I do have and I do recommend he says looking round for it because he hasn't used it today 
edit, is when you're doing fine work like this, you get um, build up on the needle. So Badger have a stuff called needle juice. It's an airbrush lubricant. You can use it to lubricate the parts. You shouldn't need to, but if you then just drop the needle in, let it come out. If you let it sit on there for a couple of minutes, and then using a clean piece of uh, rag, not anything with the, um, not one with the, the cleaner on, because you'll just clean off what you've put on. So you pull that through and clean it. And that's called Badger Needle Juice. Uh, Regbad. Regbad Needle Juice or Badger Needle. Yeah, it's just Badger backwards. Um, and it's really good. It does stop the, the tip buildup. Um, and that. Yeah, you can actually feel how, how much smoother that is alone. If you drop the Badger Needle Juice into the components as well and let it soak it really does help it puts a coating on it but it, it's not a teflon coating because if you put a teflon coating on it reacts with the paint coming out and you get blotches all over your paintwork so everything that i use the sortars the cleaning stuff the badge of cleaning fluid the um airlines and the quick releases and stuff and the style res i get all of them from barwell uh it's barwell motor supplies or badger uk um if that's what you're after simon just do a do, do a google search for badger airbrushes uk don't do badger sites uk because you get weird weird stuff back but this is what i was on about to you the difference between that and your uh, nail brush kit will be phenomenal. So, when you get your airbrush and you're off running with it, um, everyone says paint the consistency of milk. If you work from that point, then you'll do well. What I'll do is... <laughs> Um, I'm just going to put a little bit of the black so I decant the sterile res into is that reacting off that or has it gone down no that's fine um, so yeah I, I decant it from the big bottle into some little dropper bottles so what I'd recommend is five or six pots drops in um, if you're going to be doing what I'm doing then this is just for that um, and this is just Vallejo airbrush thinner and a bit of flow improver so a little bit in quick mix round um, and as Mr Badger himself showed us last week I've got stickiness everywhere um, there is a thing called a back flush technique. Um, so if you hold and don't skew yourself, well, so you've got air coming out now. If you push over the front and stop the air coming out, you can back what's called back flush, and that gives you. Um, it just mixes the paint in the pot a little bit. A lot of the um, the people who are doing quick changes and stuff like that. <laughs> badgers paint, painting badgers, yes. So, um, what I would recommend is setting the pressure low, getting a piece of paper or a piece of card, and then just going Right, that does that. That was pressure down and about quarter of the way back. So I know 
from this distance, it's doing that. Yeah. So, if I go closer, I can get a thinner line. Go even closer. And get even thinner. I don't think your link worked for men, uh, for everyone there, uh, Commander. If you come back, you get like a, a more of a bloom pattern. If you think of it, it's a... It's a, a cone coming out. So the closer you are. If you... Put the pressure right up. So it's on high pressure. And you do that from a distance. It goes black and the paint vanishes quite quick. And you get a lot on. So that sort of thing is good. It's not great, but if you're wanting to do quick priming of big areas, then you open up the valve. Uh, if you then go to try and do close stuff, the first thing that happens is if you've done that, can you see the splatter? That's because of build up on the tip. It splatters the thing. So, if you're doing that, yeah, I think it's got some, yeah, might be to do with, set, I know we had some settings. So, if this was a tank and I was painting the tank, I would point it away, Right, it's, it might not be in everyone's. People might have to change the settings. Uh, let me just have a double check. Can't say what to do. Oh, no, no, broken things. I can't see the chat. Let me just refresh the chat because I broke it. There we go. Sorry, yeah. So, if you then go close, and it's going to bend the paper, and have high pressure, you get that in the spider in. Um, if you're doing that, drop the pressure, drop the amount of paint coming out. But, just play around with it. Just use um, use a couple of sheets of paper. Use a couple of pots of paint if you have to. Get a couple of the Vallejo pots. It's a couple of quid. If you're painting on a piece of paper for a day or two, just having a play around, learning what the brush can do before you dive in and put it on the models. It's so much... Yeah. Um... I think I broke the chat. There we go. Fixed it. Um, so, yeah. Even with high pressure at a long distance, you learn that you can do certain things. So, when I do uh, weathering in the creases and stuff like that, I sometimes will use the high pressure because it uh, atomizes the paint and gives a bit of a... A bit of paint stuck on the tip. So that is just atomizing the paint because there is a lot more air there and it's going on dry. So there's no wet paint. You'll hear me talk about putting the paint on dry. So it's just atomizing it. And that is good for uh, like shading in the the recesses of the tanks and stuff like that, and you'll see me do it with uh, 
Ooh, Agrax and um, some of the other washes. And that'll just allow me to um, get quite a nice blend because it atomizes as it hits. It's not a defined line like these are with being close. So it's it's all about learning what right I want. There you go. That one looks more spread out now. Whereas drop it right back down. I can't get any paint out of it. There is paint in that. It's because I'm painting it down. And you can write names. And just play around, work out what stuff can do. Blend stuff in. And it, it's just, it, it's more to do with just playing around with it. That, there is loads of good videos out there. Um, next Level Painting. Uh, Kenny over at Next Level Painting. I've picked up so much from him. The black back, fl the back flush technique. Um, the different ways of doing the, um, the blending with... Uh, washes and stuff like that was stuff I picked up off him how to take a standard um, Vallejo model colour paint and thin it enough to understand that it will go through the airbrush it's it's not something that you're going to pick up in a day um, I'll just get rid of this. I've got a I've got a door here that I literally empty my airbrush of paint out on before cleaning it. But you can do that into the bucket. Uh, the lower pressure jack gives you a lot more control. And a lot less paint when you press the button down it releases the valve so your pressure regulator does help the paint coming through is your th finger so that's all of the paint and then the further backwards and forwards you go depends on how much paint that you want to come through and it it's getting a feel for it I can say right I can do that line if I pull that back to there and that gives you the line I'm running 35 psi I'm doing it like this I'm doing it like this you go and copy the exact same thing and it doesn't do it there's a there is loads of different re reasons why you could have a kink in your hose your psi meet the thing might not be the same calibration as mine maybe a different airbrush there might be a restriction it might be a thinner hose anything like that can affect it just play with it see what it does yourself on something that doesn't matter get some bits of cardboard get some bits of uh, just some MDF wood yeah the spider means you've got too much pressure pushing too much paint um, keep an eye out for build up on the tip because yeah, oh yeah, just do it on towel because they're just junk. Um, keep an eye on there. Give it a clean. Uh, I didn't have much of a build up there even though I was doing quite uh, fine stuff. Oh, probably because of the needle juice is pretty fresh. But the nothing to be afraid of. Failed prints. Um, I use MDF circles obviously i've picked up loads of these over the years and i've got uh 20 30 of them kicking about that i'll just try stuff on and even now uh i'm trying new stuff he's looking for it and he can't see it because i'm going to be trying those pro krill paints through it i've um again i watched kenny 
and Kenny's been using the Pro Acryl clears through uh, the airbrush and they look really good. So I'm going to give them a go as well. And your £150 start up, getting down that route, um, gives you a good, a good grounding. If in a year's time you then go, right, I need something where I can be putting facial details on 32mm models, then yes, by all means, start looking at these little fellas. Um, this one, I'm not sure the retail on this one at the moment. I know it was so much stupid when I got it. Um, I managed to pick this up off a friend, and I think they're like 250 to 300 pound. Um, but the de this goes down to half a mil. Oh, he says, and he's actually. It's it's cleaning, um, but just the use of it, you can feel when you're using it that it's actually a lot. The details going through a lot finer. There we go, a lot finer. The needle, I don't know if you can see the needle, protrudes a lot further as well, so it's got more directional control. My badges basically only just protrude out you can still damage them if you drop them like I have a few times um, but this is a good 5 or 7 mil out of the actual um, nozzle of the thing that's why it's got metal uh, protector and all of us make mistakes because I ran this and couldn't get it to work in the first week of using it because I didn't take that bit off and, <laughs> um, and it did work but Yes, uh, I know for a fact I'd probably get 50, 60 quid back on any of the Sotars, even used. Um, it, it is, there is a huge market out there. Even the, the cheap compressors, they, they go up and down in price quite a lot. Um, but there's always a good market out there for a second-hand one. There's always another gamer willing to give it a try. I had an airbrush. I didn't like it. And I sold it all off. Um, and then I, this was when I was doing RC cars. I then went out and someone told me that um, if I started using one of these, and this is the Badger Renegade Chrome, it is a very nice brush. It goes down to the same sort of detail level as the um, uh, Hadron Steinbeck. But I've killed some of the seals in this because I used to use... Um, Uh, alcohol based and it was a, a acrylic setup most of them nowadays are acrylic setups um, and that and they can do the alcohol based but this had two uh, washers inside that weren't and I've never ever got round to replacing it because obviously they've taken over and I've also got a Badger Patriot because I got it in a special deal with one of the Sotars and that was meant to be my um, Basically, my undercoating brush. Even for large panels, you're not just going to want it all one colour. You've still got to do shading and stuff like that in the gaps and right at the edges. I, I still think getting a decent one because when you're doing your armour and stuff like that, there's going to be bits that you need to. You'd probably be. A, they would look a lot better with fading and stuff like that and like slightly different colours in the recesses I think you would do well for it right let me just have a quick check on um, there's a comment from Dan on the YouTube but on Facebook uh, I couldn't tell you People ask me all the time, what pressure do you run? Um, I don't know. I just know it by how it's coming out of the airbrush. Um, I don't know. I could probably have a look, but it's all the way under there, and it is very mucky. <laughs> um, 
my compressor is set at three bar. So on full out, it's three bar, and that's what I'd probably use when I'm cleaning it. But I'd, I'll probably, it's a fraction of that when I'm doing close up and stuff. Uh, so it's, again, it's a, a thing of getting used to it. Um, if you're someone who likes the numbers and works the numbers out and, and has that sort of stuff, then yeah, take it, have a play around with it and take a note of um, what compressor values you're running at the time. But for me, I just go off the, the <laughs> sort of thing. And again, that'll differ from airbrush to airbrush. So you, you tend to get used to the airbrush. So as I was saying earlier, this could go horribly wrong. When we did a video of how to do the painting of the uh, Koga 2 colours, what we found out is if you run two of these together, that's about four. Yeah, so it's quite a high PSI, but I very rarely use it to that because the, the, the grip's always on at least 50%. So, um, so yeah, when we were doing the demo of how to paint the old Koga 2 uh, templates, we found out if you just splodge the paint on and then use another template and scratch down it, it doesn't scratch this. And I'm going to put that into practice, see if it works. I think that inline thing is about 15 quid. Um, might be worth trying one of them, Jack. And then you can keep your compressor at the set value and then on, change it on the fly. And that means you can actually change it, try it, change it, try it, like I've just done on that piece of paper. So... Hey, there you go, okay. It sort of works. This is an old one of these, so a new one would probably do a lot better. It's not as neat and tidy as I thought it was going to be, but <laughs> if it is the two hundred and fifty pound win card, do you want it back? have a look I've just thought of something brand new shiny and that would work one of these yeah cat Yeah, um, I'm just scared that that would actually scratch it. This is actually, 
because they're both the same material I think that's how it works because it's both acrylic they don't tend to want to hurt each other so there is some clean up around the edge but I will remove <laughs> so here's one kit for you care should i show the stream what we've been working on today yeah that does work there's a couple of bits that need tidying off you're not care Um, a little bit of clean up and I think you're laughing on that have I gone oh, slow. Yeah. that looks really good in the silver I do admit uh, there's a bit to come off I should have done it thicker uh, and it's easier to come off when it's thicker right what I will do is I'll quickly queue up a picture so he says I can't find it where did I put it Kit? hmm yeah that would be amazing uh, if I find you on Facebook, you sent me the picture, so that'll work. Um, here. Yep, I found it. You're here somewhere. Oh, do you want to copy and replace the picture already on your desktop well I can't find it on my desktop yeah, must have been there somewhere so um, as part of the partnership with K from fully modded lighting who has an Etsy store that does loads of amazing things including the light up um, Palpatine that we did last week. Uh, oh, and these. I can quickly show you this before I take it out. So he did one of these, which is a Tau stealth suit that lights up. Amazing. Really, really nice. And a Phantom. The Phantom, um, I'm surprised you haven't had people fighting over, you for, fighting over the Phantom. Oh. Is that going to work? Yes, definitely has 10% off to viewers. It comes up in the stream. Uh, if you use the code Friend of Protec. So, I'm going to enlarge this. This is one for the X Wing community. Um. drum roll so he's getting us some of these done in the metal if <laughs> yeah so the you can't you can see me the bits that are the gr the grey blanked out bits are going to be in the chrome colour um, we have got loads of plans for these they're going to be available on the web store at some sort of price or free if you spend so much in the web store or possibly prizes for the stream um, and the back has both mine and Kay's advert on which I will 
those. Second one. Oh. It is in here somewhere. Nope. First one. <laughs> so, that's going to be the back um, of the card. All shiny and chrome and all nice with our... Um, Our bits and pieces on that. <laughs> uh, well, since no one else has done any of these decent chips, then I decided that um, we're going to have to do the best ship in the game ourselves. Just because certain people can't use them to their full advantage... <laughs> so yeah we've got them them coming soon so i'll keep you updated and again big thank out to, a big shout out to <laughs> decimator is a wannabe fal falcon just more stylish it has a lot more class to it <laughs> I don't know. I did all right with it. <laughs> yeah, with the that was the thing on my latest run. Um, I didn't actually use that one. I actually in the system open where I, I managed to do reasonably well. Um, I actually used rasters that he gave me for my birthday. And I'd painted a uh, painted the Vader to match the the week before going down. Oh, it's Dale still. I can't believe I came up with that list all on my own and no help from anyone. I oh, didn't bite. And I've just remembered. <laughs> I've just remembered to do an advert as well. So there's a couple of people that probably vanished for a second. Oh, right when the sneak advert came on as well. Your subscription drop, Dale. <laughs> oh well. Don't know what you're on about. Dale. Dylan? Dylan? So there you go. That uh, has actually come out quite shiny. Considering um, it was covered in paint. No, I don't. Oh, the dinner, right. I just ran an advert as well. Broken toad bushes are amazing. Sorry. Um, I, was, I won't lie, I was absolutely chuffed when... Uh, Chris contacted us and said would I be interested in selling them um, I've been asking for a while and it, and he caved and said I asked him a while ago um, yeah and we now stock them and we stock the brush soap for them which is really really cool uh, what else came today did, oh, I was going to do. Uh, I'm still subbed. <laughs> oh, we can't get rid of you that easy. 
So, I know I'm not getting much painting done tonight, but it was a bit of a show and tell evening. Um, Elder Scrolls came today. Guess what? I've just opened Elder Scrolls. Uh, this is the rules book box. Some of the miniatures already look fantastic. <laughs> so, this is Elder Scrolls. For a rules box, it has no miniatures, so it is like 30 quid. This is a very hard shot. Um, is that a comic? Oh, no. It's... Oh, that's your... One of the... Your first steps into the world of Tamriel. Then there's a... Actually a nice rule book. So Steve was telling us there's a few ways of playing it. So there's um beat your opponent round the head with whatever you've got in your team. There is work together. It's um a new miniatures game, Jack. It released I've literally got my copy of it today. I'll show you some of the figures. Um <laughs> so lots of shiny tokens I best get on to Koga 2 they're both the same tokens that they do look at so I'll speak to Koga 2 about getting me some nice shiny ones of them um, there you go what more could you ask for Foxy you get a bag of baggies um, so you get a pack of dice the bespoke dice for the game and they have the no <laughs> keep trying dice um, adversary deck and there is webs I don't know what that deck oh, event deck that it says on the other side uh, event deck spells I think there's items in there these are all oh the character cards are really nice Oh, I don't know if you want that. You, no, you, you don't want these, Foxing. Those character cards are really nice. <laughs> so, obviously, there's quick slots, weapons, um, body armor. different characters the companion of Skyrim so that's you basically buy um, I think there's at the moment there's two factions in it so you can choose or you can <laughs> don't can be arranged would you like them in metal I know a guy so I think these are 30 quid for the, the starter set and there's a good chunk of cards and a good chunk of uh, tokens roll book dice, baggies, tokens, so the it isn't a board mate, it's open, so it's like a skirmish game, um, morale, event phase, damage, hitting someone, the game, Preparation, building a party. <clears throat> so there is like, and I am just I'm going off what um, I've picked up from Steve and stuff like that. There is like a dungeon crawl part of it where you and your mates can do a, like there it is quests. So scenarios you can go and do things where um, one of the other boxes comes with bad guys in it. So that's the rule set. Uh, wherever the where did I put the lid? There you go. You've got to buy it now, Foxy. It's got an invisible lid. There it is. So that's the car rule set. Ah <laughs> yes. So models. At the moment, there is three boxes. So there is the 
Imperial faction. Now, they do resin direct from uh, Modifius, or um, people like us are going to get the hard plastic versions in. Uh, I opted for the resin because I'm also getting... <laughs> yeah, they're, they're good. Don't know what you're on about. Um, so again, this is the first time I've opened any of this. So, and I've not really had much time to have a look into it. So these are resin, so they're not on the sprue. So I presume the sprues, the boxes are big because the sprue size. And. Oh, they're pretty nice. Actually. So, which one did I get? One, two, three, four, five. So, five figures. That's really nice quality. Oh. Yeah. It's the stormtroopers before they were stormtroopers. These, this is when they were in training. Um, something to do with being on Fenris and not having wolves. Uh, and I believe only the resin ones come with uh, bases, not bases, but uh, scenic bases. But yeah. There's a little bit of flash, not much to clean up, and the flash does look really thin as well. And just, yeah, it's just rub off with your finger flash. So I think a thin, uh, a light wire brush would really help out. So they are the Imperial Faction starter set. Um. there for now they look with them being browns and silvers and reds and stuff like that they really look <laughs> um, they really look like they're going to be quite easy to paint as well yeah so you get a hero, a mage, and two soldiers. I think they're 20, 20 something pound. Uh, I think with our discount, the workout about 21, something like that. Uh, you got the storm cloaks. Again, it's got um, the commander. Oh, he's an archer. Um, a warrior, I'm presuming he's the, and then two, oh, sorry, three Stormcloak soldiers with great swords. <laughs> sorry, mate. Um, so that's the two factions that are, are kicking about. So I'm guessing that these are the bad guys that you actually get to fight and stuff, and it's the Bleak Falls Barrow Delves that. So the delve is, I think that's, it's got people in it. Um, so yeah, you've got Dragonborn Champion, Drago Overlord, <laughs> uh, Great Sword Warriors, Skeleton Archers, and they all come with Scenic Bases. More battery died. Um, so I also spent <coughs> quite a lot of money and it means that people in my local gaming group probably won't have to but I bought the scenery kit and I think that uh, Steve Dates bought the scenery kit as well so the scenery kit comes with um, that is the treasure chest set so there's treasure chests um Markers and tokens and upgrade set. So there is tokens upgrades. Puzzle door terrain. So I'm presuming something to do with quests. 
then, and I'm going to open one of these, the Tomb Walls terrain. One of them I get two of. So the Tomb Wall terrain, you get two. And the Nord Tomb Archers terrain. So there was a load of terrain boxes as well. But I think, because as you will see in a second, this solid resin, and those that one there weighs an absolute ton. Um, so I think all in it was about £135 for the um, scenery set. Oh, now I see why. That is a hefty chunk of resin. Wow. So you get f <laughs> four resin walls. That's some detail on them. And they are they are solid resin. Crypt. Ah, oh, so you get t two with crypts on and two normal ones. And then a baggy of what I'm presuming is going to be corners off it. Oh, so uh, ends of walls begging to be magnetized, yeah. And then there's some pillars to hide around for in the rooms. And yeah, two sets of this. Yes. Um, it would mean playing the game to learn it all. I don't know how much you... I don't know how much you would learn by playing this, going through the missions and stuff. It might be... Yeah, <laughs> it could take a while, Jack. Um, but as I said, I've picked it up. Uh, I know locally, I know a few of us have picked it up, and I know Snowy um, was looking at it. We've actually got a couple of sets coming in because I messed up on my order and I ended up with loads of extras. Um, what I do have, and I've never opened. Um, and this has actually just come up on their website. I had six solo games. There you go. Um, this is the limited edition Dragonborn. So there is solo missions you can do in this with single characters as well. Oh, there you go. I picked these up from the Expo last year. So a Dragon Ball DB, yeah, Dragon Ball promo, DB promo one. So in a nice box. I've seen them on the website today for uh, 15 quid. So, but not sure how long they will last. And they really do. The boxes are fantastic that these come in. Uh, and all of that is my collection. Um, I'll be keeping so that is really good it is really nice um, da -da -da. that doesn't look very oh that's the uh, good one <laughs> yeah the shit it does make it pop that ok I will agree So, because I'm in a good mood. Who would like some prizes? Oh, well, the compressor would.
I promised Snowy I would do some rebels, so um, I'm going to fling a Luke into there. Take Guri back because he didn't want Guri. He doesn't love Guri anymore. Don't really have many rebels. They're mine. It's almost a rebel. Kit Wessel, there we go. So, 30 minutes, three prizes, anyone's game. Um, there's nothing about subs, nothing about that. If anyone has subbed or made a donation tonight, then cheers. But I will just do this for the fun of people in the group. He says looking for it and can't find it. Uh, custom giveaway. I'm going to have to edit one because uh, I'm going to do it for 20 minutes and then no doubt Snowy will miss it. Uh, everyone advanced. Any subscribers will get an extra ticket when they purchase it, or when they use their points to get a ticket. Ticket cost usual, 100 each. General, fire, fast prizes giveaway. So fire away, it goes live in the set it should go live in a second there we go um so i'll do them in order um there'll be a k2so a luke metal card and red squadron veteran on the other side and a Freshly painted on the stream shield upgrade card. Got that Jack straight in there. 150 tickets. Wow, Jack. <coughs> Will, you don't need this. You need a space in between raffle and three. Same for you, Paul. <laughs> oh. So Will and Paul have... Uh, Will's fixed it. Joe's fixed it. Joe usually fixes it. Oh, hey, that's a bit bright. And... Yay! Paul, you put a... Uh, a sp you didn't put a space in between raffle and three, so it didn't... Uh, there we go. Sorry. <laughs> oh, oh, cold coffee. Right, well, I'm going. I'm just going to tidy this little bit up that I've just knocked everywhere when I went to get the ticket, uh, the prizes out. So I still have everyone's prizes here from last night. Oh, what's that? Uh, from last night. So Will's is there. Jaws is there. Ulfrix is there. Yeah, Ulfrix, Joe, Will. So, if any of you win tonight, I'm glad I held off post. Well, we don't post till a Friday anyway. So, postings will get done tonight. Um, sorry I've not got much painting done tonight. Uh, there was just so much to show off and have a look at and have a play through. Uh, we got the airbrush 
bits and pieces. I'm hoping people didn't fear the air, or don't fear an airbrush as much now and are willing to go out and buy one. Um, if there's anything else you want me to show you with the airbrushes later on. Uh, yeah, Rob, I've always had a messy... You want to see outside of this. Uh. <laughs> yeah, you're a, you're a horrible human being, Rob. I will be upset. Uh, remember, these are on Twitch for, I think, a month. So you can go back and look over it again. Uh, we also within a day or so i'll probably do these tomorrow morning uh while i'm painting but we also upload them onto our youtube channel as well so you can go back and watch if you've got any questions drop drop them on the pro tech page because i'm not always i do spend a lot of time signed out of facebook at the moment just trying to get work done and not distractions of people showing me shiny things all the time What's what's Simon showing me? Yep, Mandalorian. Um, thank you for the donation, Matt. Oh, there's summit in there, Dale. Once. So is it K2SO? Is it Luke? Or is it the shield upgrade? Oh, they are shiny. There we go. I can do it like that. Um, just closing some things down so I can actually see what people have said. Yep. Oh, Zoe's just ended up buying a PS4, and I'm yeah. That's not X-Wing. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. You can fly X-Wings on it though. Yeah, possibly. So, so far, the people that have entered, um, there is no Snowy. And I purposefully did Rebel stuff for Snowy. If we all chant and do some sort of medieval like ritual or something like that, do you think he'll appear? Or is it like uh, Beetlejuice, you have to say his name three times? Snowy. Snowy, snowy. Oh. I wondered what you were doing there. Points ten. Are you trying to give yourself points? <laughs> 55 tickets this evening. Haha, <laughs> bacon sandwich. But, but he's still... Yeah, there we go. <laughs> bacon sandwich and snowy appears. <laughs> nope, not working. Um, did you find out when you were coming around this week, by the way, snowy? Oh, I still need to work out this emotes thing. Yeah. We'll do a bacon sandwich. I need to put my superstar um, ninja on it. <laughs> oh, wow. 
Uh, I really want to, I don't want to know who's blowing the pork horn. Have Twitch just kicked me off? <laughs> <laughs> Few more joiners on uh, Facebook. There's a Lee Williams there, um, and Mr. Tippett from America. Hope you do all doing okay. <gasps> Did you just use all of your points, Jack? See who that is. Uh, uh, it's in the garage. I had. We haven't done any sending out this week. Um, so, if you want to collect it, uh, we've actually set the garage up a bit now. So the entrance. Uh, has seats on so you can come in you can sit down and um, and then I've got my two and a half meters away it's more than industry standard uh, yeah because obviously rain and stuff has started to come down now but um, we had a couple of people around today picking bits and pieces up and it works well I just need to tidy up that the reason that I'm having to do painting streams is we've got all the racking done we've got all of the bits and pieces sorted there's just a huge amount of second hand bits and pieces and stock sat on the table that I've got nowhere to put until it's sorted out uh, I don't want to just go shoving it in boxes and do what's happened to it now uh, and be forgotten about so at the moment we're picking through handfuls of stuff each day when we've got time uh, cleaning them up making sure they're all right and putting them up on ebay and unfortunately it's just taking a lot longer with the new stock that's coming in the vallejo stuff that came in this week the huge amounts of fallout that we've had in and go out and come back in um, the new other new paint lines like the secret weapon and the other bits and pieces like that it's just been a case of priorities the stuff that I can just sit there and put up and get done quickly between me and Joe has gone up Whereas the stuff that takes time may need a bit of a repaint, may need a bit of a, a clean up just to get working. Um, unfortunately, we've um, had to let go by the wayside. Um, which included some huge boxes of stuff that Rasta brought up that's just sat um, spread all over the garage at the moment. So I think there's. I've just literally found one of the boxes that. I'm not sure I've already had a look through this on the stream, but that was some of the metal that we found in amongst all of these boxes. There's all sorts in there. Um, how about that? That is a dwarf cheerleader in metal from um, Blood Bowl. Suat. It's quite even. No, nope, I've got Chaos Dwarves. So, Chaos Dwarves by the bucket full. I think it was three of... There was a Minotaur one in here somewhere. There's the body of the Minotaur. 
Um, yeah. Mark, you wouldn't. Yeah, you have been hoarding a long time. So, Rasta, in comparison to what I've got in the garage, how much is in this box? Yeah, that already is a nightmare to put together. <laughs> um, this is probably a twentieth of what was dropped off between Rasta and someone else. There's lots of nostalgia bits in here. I keep finding stuff going, oh, that's so nice. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> there, was, there is and was and will be boxes coming out of that garage for years. Uh, what's that one? That's another Eldar. A lot of these space elves. Huge squig. Uh, howling Ban... I think there is Howling Banshees in here. Are they the ones that are jumping up and doing things? Eldar. Um, I think... Yeah. What's the plan with these is just... Um... We were going, <laughs> we were going to do them a bit at a time, and then give Rasta the money from them as stuff sells the Harlequins, mate. Sorry, um, Howling Banshees. Were they the ones with the wings? I'm sure, there was winged ones in here. Um, <clears throat> in the end, we just give him a a price for it all, and it just means I can take the next two years to go through it bit by bit. It is literally, yeah. A lot of work. When he said he had a couple of boxes of bits. But I, I just love looking through it all. Oh, there's the... So, there's the... Minotauri thing. Chaos Dwarf. There is the Slave Girls. The Metal Slave Girls. Prisoners. Yeah, I've, the amount of people says, we'll come and help. We'd love to come and help. Just get rid of this virus thing, and we're there. We're going to come and help. Um, is that the Banshees, Jack, with big hair? Who want hair bits? I think they're them. They're... Yeah, they're the... Um, Harley Quinns, but yeah, I think there is Jack, and I'm sure there was. Oh, there's all the swords. They just stand out quite well because they're all in all in the black bits. Yeah. Yes, so I presume there's some in here. Oh, look at that. That is the uh, Orc Blood Bowl cheerleader with saggy. Um, um, saggy pom poms. Yeah, I'll, I'll make sure they're all there. I'll make sure they're not damaged. That's the whole problem we've got so far. Because, obviously, that's another one of those. There's two saggy. Only one saggy pom pom now. Yep, there is. Two arc cheerleaders. I know there's more of them in the garage. Um, so yeah, I need to go through what's in the garage as well because I said I grabbed a load of metal out. So there's at least four swords there and only three bodies. So there's more up there somewhere, hopefully. Um, so it looks like one of Rasta's conversions with the flooring. Oh, oh, because of that. You know, there could just be that bit. There's a lot of bits, because Rasta used to get bits by the um, kilogram when he used to work there. Uh, that's the Eldar Sniper. That's nice. Rangers? That's really nice. 
Um, Seraphim. Is that that one? Is that that? I, I haven't even looked. Oh, there's loads of sisters' backpacks. Are they sisters' backpacks? I think they are. They definitely are. More elder. There's definitely sisters in here. More. That squig's huge as well. Squig and squig rider. Uh, oh! Ugluck! Not Ugluck. Um, yeah, the Urkai Warrior. And there's a Bur Buramir. Buramir. Familiar, is it? Astropath. Oh, I could look through these for hours. To do videos of looking through Rasta's uh, miniature collection. Yeah, there's more. There must be a lot of bodies kicking around to go with them. Oh, there's Gollum on a rock. That's a big lump. Another Chaosy Dwarf. <clears throat> um, not that I've seen in this box, Ulfric, but I'll be honest with you, it's Rasta that could be anything. Like sister's bits. So, yeah. There's definitely some sort of sisters and bits and pieces. Uldrad, Uldrad, Uldrad. Which one's Uldrad? Be my guiding light. Won't be any of them. Big spear left under my hand, but I've just moved my hand. I'll hold it here. No, it isn't. <laughs> uh, you can no longer enter the raffle. You meant that one. No, that's not a spear. Oh, you mean that? It's just a warlock, I think. If that's the one that you think it is. No, the other left. That one? Left, left, my left. So if I'm looking at it, do, 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 do. that one. Yeah, you can all bugger off now. Oh, yeah. I just realised who it was when I was looking. Uh, another one of the Eldar Sniper team. Eldar Ranger, that's all. And some old... I've already asked about these. A couple of friends helped me out. They are the old Epic Knights. Sentinel Knight. There's a couple of them in that. Ooh, who's that? Which something? Which hunter? Which which which? There's a scribe. I'm guessing that's from the retune. Uh, it's another one of the uh, chaos dwarves. Warlock. Oh, someone with a big head. Yeah, and then even older stuff.
Yeah, I'll let you know if you win. Have you... Yeah. Have you entered, Mark? Yeah, I'll let you know if you win. And I'm sure these lot won't shout about... Uh... <laughs> yeah. Um, the, I'm, I'm sure they won't uh, tell me to put the... Uh, Repick the winner. So, the first winner this evening. And we will go for the one that we worked on today. So... The shield upgrade, you might need to clean it a little bit as well. <laughs> Always, Mark. Would you have me any other way? So, winner of the shield upgrade is Paul. Paul is here somewhere. I've heard him. Well done, Paul. Um, I'm going to send it with Joe. Because Joe's got stuff coming. <laughs> you, you can share postage again. The next one. <laughs> Tell you what I am going to do. That's never going in a... Because I will forget who won it. Paul via Joe. So, next one will be for the Luke Skywalker metal card. Picking the winner, and the winner is... Oh my god. <sighs> well done, Snowy. And I know you're not listening. Look, I've just wrote on his metal card because he's not here to say thank you. It's a sleeve, don't tell him though. I didn't write on the card, Jack. But yes, we put this on f for Snowy, and yeah. So the final one that can't be Snowy is K2SO, and we have Foxy. <laughs> well done for winning K2SO in shiny foil with a Rebel logo on the back. Uh, I'm going to put it into a sleeve as well. <laughs> I'll put it the, I'll put it in your stuff to um collect. Let that dry. So Paul via Joe Snowy who's still not here. <laughs> That's the pilot prizes. And I the ones that are getting sent out will go out tomorrow with our postage run. Um, I'll close that. And it should go. Oh, do nothing. There we go. Giveaway has finished. Thank you for running a giveaway. So, yeah. Thank you for uh, being here. And I, I know it's not been a massive... Um, me sitting painting but i'm hoping you i'm hoping people picked up stuff about the airbrushing um getting stuff like that sorted it was like last week's about the uh how to use the stencils and the best way to get the most out of the stencils i think a lot of people picked up a lot from that and i, th I actually enjoyed like showing people how i do it and i hope people pick up it might not be the best way it might not be the right way it's just how i do it um i tend to get away with it a lot i use it a lot that way so uh yeah <laughs> um thank you everyone for popping along tonight uh thank you for the the subs the followers and the donations that's much appreciated we are day four into it and we've done quite well uh up to the monthly goal even though tonight wasn't a uh, goal night 
<laughs> no worries. Uh, it will be on Twitch, but we'll also have it on YouTube as well, um, so we can keep it t uh, forever. I don't know. I might do something over the weekend. I don't hundred percent know yet. Um, I've <coughs> I've got a couple of commissions in that I might just sit and paint the commissions while chatting crap to you a lot. So I might do that on Saturday on Sunday when I'm meant to be. I also want to try something as well because we've got um, Discord running. So every, I've been posting my Discord server up for people to come along and join. Uh, I might actually, um, depending on how Snowy is, if he's actually there. Nope. Um, see if he fancies chatting about some bits and pieces on the live stream as well. Through Discord, if it works. So thank you everyone again. Uh, it's been great to have you here. I was well chuffed to show everything that um, turned up. Hope some of you have seen some bits and pieces that you might want to pick up and some of you have learnt something from the airbrushing. Um, I think that's it for tonight. Stay safe. If I don't see you over the weekend, then we will be back on Wednesday night with another painting one hopefully have some i might do a vader and i might do luke and stuff like that so good night everyone stay safe thank you for coming